welcome to Arcadia University's BI 327 histology course. Uh, this series of lectures is going to take a look at cytology, or its essence, uh, an introduction to cell biology uh, from a microscopic or histological approach. Uh, as I described previously, uh, there are going to be a number of objectives uh, for each of these topics, each of these series of lectures, uh, and it's going to be important for you as a student to uh, take a look at these. They'll be posted on the website, uh, they'll be posted to the syllabus, uh, to get an idea what it is uh, that I, as an instructor, uh, feel are the important components. And you can think about these as uh, essentially almost like study focusing questions as you're going through and learning about the material. Now, when I said that we're going to study, the, in essence, the human body uh, using the concept of histology and microscopic anatomy, we're basically going to be looking at what's occurring at the cellular level, at the tissue level, uh, and then going both up into the organ systems uh, as well as down into the molecular levels. But one of the key concepts to keep in mind is that what we're going to focus in on is a concept called cellular differentiation. Cellular differentiation, kind of like it says, we get look at cells that are different from one another. Uh, in a development course, we would talk about how it is that a cell goes from an immature cell, uh, the stem cells, uh, very undeveloped, uh, very generic cells, into a mature cell. It would differentiate or develop into that adult cell, into that mature cell, by developing specific anatomical structures within them, interacting in specific ways with cells around them, and they're going to develop distinct functions associated with them. And so, again, that relationship between structure and function that we talked about in the first lecture between our warehouse and our skyscraper, we're going to see the same thing occurring within the cells of our body. So a muscle cell is going to look different and have a different function than a neuron cell, a nerve cell. A nerve cell is going to have a different structure, a different function than an epidermal skin cell. And again, so what we're going to be focusing in as we're going through this course is understanding what are these differences between the cells that allow them to essentially fulfill the function to keep the organism, keep the individual alive. Okay, so for this series of lectures, the cytology, the cell biology lecture, basically what we're going to be looking at is the basic structures within a cell. And again, recognizing that when we talk about differentiation later on, some of these cells are going to be modified. Some of these cell structures are going to be modified. Some are going to be present. Some are going to be absent. Some are going to look different, depending upon the cell that we're talking about. So the nucleus is our starting point. Hopefully, uh, you know that the nucleus is the region of the cell that contains the DNA and associated proteins. So it's going to carry that hereditable information, that information that's passed from parent to offspring, but for the purposes of our course, it's important that it carries the, the DNA, it carries the, the genetic information, uh, but it's going to be this region of the cell which is going to be directing what's going on within the cell. It's going to have that key role in gene expression. So what we're going to see in that previous slide, the, the genes that are going to be present and turned on in a muscle cell are going to be different from the genes that are going to be turned on in our nerve cell. They're going to be different from the genes that are turned on in a skin cell because the genes that are going to be turned on or turned off are going to determine what type of proteins and what type of activity is going to be present within uh, the cell that we're looking at. Now the nucleus can provide us with a lot of information about the cell. As we talked about again in those earlier lectures, the nucleus, because it has a lot of DNA, uh, is going to stain very basophilic. It's going to stain very darkly, either uh, dark blue, dark purple, in this case a little darker red, um, with hematoxylin. And so it's going to be a very easy way, a very quick way, of taking a look at our biological specimen and getting rapid information about it. Uh, take a look at the nuclei and you get an idea of what magnification you're worth. The nuclei are big, you're at a high magnification. If the nuclei are small, you're at a low magnification. Uh, but taking a look at the nuclei within a given cell, we can learn about it. We take a look at the, the nuclei size in relationship to the amount of cytoplasm. Uh, will give us an idea of whether the cell is active uh, in doing things. 
the shape of the nucleus can tell us about the shape of the cell or can help us identify it. Um, nuclei may be round, maybe oval in the case we're looking at here, or they may be segmented, kind of clumped around uh, in this weird way. And that's going to be a characteristic that we can use to identify cells as we're going through. The number of nuclei present can provide us with a lot of information. There are going to be some cells that don't have a nucleus. Our red blood cells are a mature cell. Human red blood cells don't have a nucleus. Most cells are going to be mononucleate, one cell, one nucleus. But there are going to be examples as we go through the body of binucleate cells, multinucleate cells like the, the skeletal muscle cells we used in our previous examples. Uh, are going to have lots and lots of nuclei, and again, as an identifying characteristic. The location of the nuclei can also tell us information about the cell. Basal nuclei are going to be towards the bottom of the cell, central nuclei toward the center of the cell, and centric nuclei uh, are going to be pushed off to the side. And again, they're pushed off to the side because of the other things that are going to be present within the cell. And the nucleus is going to be easy to identify where some of these other things may be less uh, less obvious when we at least take a, a, a cursory or initial glance uh, at the cells we're studying. We can take a look at the chromatin pattern. Chromatin is again getting down at the, the molecular level. The chromatin is the DNA and the associated proteins. It's going to be intensely basophilic, um, but there are going to be different patterns associated with this. Euchromatin is essentially true chromatin. This is a less compact staining and because it's less compact, the DNA and associated proteins aren't densely packed in on one, uh, one another. So they're going to be more diffuse, and that's going to contribute to the lighter staining. So in this image on the right-hand portion of the slide, we can see a distinct nucleus, but we can see kind of a lighter staining period, uh, appearance around it. There's still DNA in that region, but it's euchromatin, the less compacted version of chromatin, which in essence generally means that this is regions of the DNA that are opened up and available for gene expression. So the presence of a lot of euchromatin, this lighter staining within the nucleus, generally means that this is a cell that's using that DNA and it's often going to be associated with a cell that's creating a lot of protein, building a lot of protein. We can also have heterochromatin. So again, another nucleus from a different cell in this case. Heterochromatin is more densely packed DNA and associated proteins. And because it's more densely packed, it's going to have denser, darker staining associated with it. Now, the darkest amount uh, of heterochromatin in this slide, again, is going to be associated with uh, the nucleolus here, the location of ribosomal RNA synthesis. So we got a lot of DNA here, but we also have a lot of ribosomal RNA, which is being synthesized in this region. The presence of a nucleolus is going to be common within all cells, but a very large, or in some cases multiple nucleoli within a nucleus, is going to indicate a cell that needs a lot of ribosomal RNA. And a cell that needs a lot of ribosomal RNA is going to be a cell that's involved with a lot of protein synthesis. So again, by looking at the nucleus, you can get an idea of what's going to be going on within the cell. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at hoffmanj at arcadia.edu. Thanks.